Okay, good morning, everyone. I see only 49 people in the room. Hopefully somebody come later. Uh, so we have Friday today and it is about one week left before your exam. So uh, your homework two is graded now. Eric did a good job. And I should say that average score is about 80 out of 100, which is not bad. But also I should say that about 20 people did not turn it. So please again, take it seriously. The very fact that we have, well, again, it does not mean that you fail, but there, if people don't do homeworks, it's a good chance that you will fail at your exams. Regarding my lectures, the same story, like I see 50 people in the room out of 100. Well, again, it's not mandatory to come, plus I make a record and post it, but believe me, I make the record and post it just so that you can rehear it. Rather, uh, rather this than uh, just to miss it. I know what you may assume that, okay, you may say that uh, you will rehear my lecture later, but believe me, if you don't come now, there is a chance that you will never hear it. You will never find this time. I know you have busy schedule. Some of you are abroad now at your home country maybe and this different time zone, but it is still recommended that you attend lectures during our regular time, unless it's really impossible. Uh, yes, I was a question about homework three. Yes, homework three is due next Friday, next week in a week. And as usual, we will have two help sessions on Thursday and Wednesday and Thursday at five from, from five to seven. I will give another health session on next Friday and take it seriously because your exam will be on Monday. People ask what is the best way to prepare to your exam? Answer is very simple. Do your homework a couple of times and do it yourself. If you do your homework yourself, it will be okay. Check the solutions that we are posting. Check and make sure you recognize all your mistakes, all your errors you did. I will also send you some topical overview material, some uh, like brief overview slides this weekend, the equation list. So this also will be helpful for you, but please realize you take it seriously. Otherwise you will be very disappointed in one week, believe me. I know I teach this class 10 times and this is 11th time. Okay, so regarding your homework, we did some examples in the class. We are in good shape now and I will continue. I think this, week, please spend this weekend on thermodynamics, I think uh our first exam is 15th not not 15th your first exam is october 5 uh, monday october 5 11 o'clock you just in a week please take it carefully and seriously it's in a week fifth it's fifth october 5th so you almost ready to do your homework almost ready and there is one topic that we should cover it's a deal guys i hope you will start it today but i still want to talk a little bit more about uh, what we didn't consider last time so please remember and let me at this point let me share my screen so remember we did inter last time what we did interpolate we discussed interpolation I gave you uh, somehow more hints about what is interpolation, what you should remember. We talk about it, we can see the, all these diagrams. So please make sure you can do interpolation. And please remember that when you do interpolation, it can be any variable versus any variable. It's not like pressure versus temperature. I intentionally wrote this diagram that you see on my screen, like Y versus X. Y and X can be any property you have, pressure, temperature, any intensive pr property, pressure, temperature, specific internal energy, enthalpy, and so on. Please realize it. So, and for instance, you may take a look at your, uh, for instance, uh, there are many examples in your textbook and there is good uh, example number, uh, for instance, 3.7. You can see it now here on my screen. So basically this is just example when you can see that, for instance, enthalpy can be variable you're looking for. Let's read this text. It is the ask to determine the temperature of H2O or water at state with given pressure and enthalpy. Heat. So how you identify it and so on. There's good example and similar what I consider it in the class. So first again, you will check is it saturated mixture or not. You have given, right, how you will check it. You have given pressure. Your pressure is 0 0.5 megapascals. What does it mean? Uh, that you will check what is saturated 
temperature and what is enthalpy in that case. So you will compare your enthalpy that you have with enthalpy given at saturated pressure. So at 4.5 megapascal, that enthalpy will be Hg will be 2748 if you go to correct table. Which, by the way, which table you will take to, to get this answer? Which table? Yes, this should be table number five. It's pressure table for saturated water vapor. And then I believe at this point you should reply fast. Okay, now, so you will see that AG is this value 2748, correct? So it will mean that your enthalpy is higher than AG, right? You see the screen, it will be here. So you deal with superheated vapor. And then you will go to where? You will go to the table with superheated vapor which is table A6, yes? And what you will do with table A6? It's stated here, the, so determine temperature for enthalpy. You will go to table and you will see that there is no, definitely there is no exact enthalpy equal to uh, 2890 kilojoule per kilogram. So you will have to do interpolation. You may see this table, what do you see here? That you will see that two neighboring values. You will see that for temperature, with uh, T is equal to 200 degrees Celsius, you have this one, right? You, your enthalpy is 2855, and for 250 degrees Celsius, you have 2961. So you are in between them, okay? You're in between them. So you will need to do interpolation. And now your value X will be what? Your value X will be enthalpy, H. Your value uh, Y will be what? Your value Y will be temperature. So you will do this interpolation exactly like you did here. Like so, so what is value A? You have it, you have temperature here 200 and 250, you have enthalpy results here. And when you do this interpolation, you will find your answer and you will get this given temperature. I do recommend that you also do this yourself and check. It. Okay, does it make sense? In your homework and you, in fact, remember I give you a lot of tasks in your homework. I give you simple calculated questions when you are expected uh, to, uh, to answer these questions. I give you property tables when you expected to do interpolation. It's entire task three. And also then I give you the, the task number four when I ask you to identify state by, based on your properties. Please do it yourself. Do it. We did example in the class. That's something that you need to remember. Now, uh, so another point that we did not pay attention so far, it's what? It's actually saturated liquids, uh, right? Saturated and saturated liquids, saturated vapor, saturated mixtures, correct? I told you, so what we consider, remember that in this table you have to, in fact, in the, what, what, is, what is key point, what is peculiar about saturated tables? That you have two values for each pressure or temperature. Vf and Vg, Uf and Ug. You have value for saturated liquid and you have value for saturated vapor, they stay together. So you definitely should be able to uh, distinguish them. And also we have, a, in some tables you have value Fg, which is simply distance between them, the difference between liquid and vapor phase, correct? So that it is. And basically, basically for instance, if you can see the table A4 or A5, so how it look like? This is your table, right? Specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, and entropy, all specific values. So basically remember what you have here. You see my screen. You have values UF and UG. You have values for HF and AG, SF and SG. And also you have value for HFG, UFG, and so on. What is this? It's simply HG minus HF. It's just distance of this plateau, right? Everybody remember this? I hope so. So basically remember, so how we identify state and how we will deal. As long as you're along this line, it's saturated liquid, it's subscript F. As long as you are here, it's, sub, it's saturated vapor, it's subscript G. And basically that what you will deal with. And if you find, no need to find some value, that's how you proceed. Remember concept of quality. So what is a quality? Remember, we, we talk about quality. Quality by default, it's a fraction of vapor you have, okay? And how we identify it. Here it's very good to, to describe it. So basically what we have. Let's say I have mixture of liquid and vapor, okay? So then what is my total volume here? 
my total volume will be volume of liquid plus volume of vapor, correct? So what will be in that case my specific volume, my average specific volume? It will be total volume divided by total mass. I can write it like this. Liquid volume over mass plus vapor volume over mass, correct? And at this point, I may realize the following, that what is liquid, uh, what is actually my volume of liquid? It's mass of liquid by specific volume of liquid, mass of vapor by specific volume of vapor. And I may remember that my quality X is nothing but uh, mass fraction of vapor, while y minus uh, X is mass fraction of liquid. Some people ask me why we call a mass fraction of vapor to be X. Well, it is convention. It might be vice versa. You can define quality like fraction of liquid, everything will be vice versa. It's just a convention. But want, what I want to show you that if you substitute these items here, you come to very nice expression. So your, specific, your average specific volume, let's see here, your average specific volume will be nothing but here, one minus X over VF plus XVG or like this, or like this. So please remember this formula. Okay, you can write down, you can use, in the exam I will give you for this formula, but I do recommend that you remember it. So please realize that your average volume is nothing like this. And you may see here that if X is zero, what does it mean? That right hand side goes out, your volume is equal to a saturated phase. If X is equal to zero, what does it mean? It means that there is no vapor. It's very bad quality, it's zero quality. So VF is here. If your X is equal to one, it's vice versa. There is no liquid and V is equal to VG. And similar story happens for any, now look here, it's something important. I wrote this for specific volume. By believe me or not, it will be exactly the same formula for other parameters in your table for specific internal energy, for specific enthalpy, even for entropy, we can see the label. So it will be exactly the same formula. Here, sub, here value y, it can be anything v, u, h, whatever it is. So basically you will use this formula. And that's very important that now, if you remember this, what you can do, you can express x quality as follows. Please look here. It's a big formula, but it's very illustrative if you remember this. So this formula allows you to combine all the properties together and find it. Does it make sense? What I write here is that you, X is equal to V minus VF over VFG, U minus UF over UFG, H minus HF over HFG, correct? What does it mean? It means that if I know any of this property, if I know V, I will, am able to find quality and I am able to file any other parameter. Do you agree? I believe so. Which means that what? I recall it and now it's time to really understand it. I told before. Okay, we talk here about saturated mixture, you understand. If it was compressed liquid, if it was superheated vapor, no reason to talk about quality, right? We talk about the case when two substances, two items, two fractions coexist. In that case, remember, Pressure and temperature are coupled. They are not independent. So pressure and temperature are not enough to identify my state, right? I need something else. All saturated mixtures for given pressure and temperature is the same point on PT diagram, right? But they are different point and PV and TV diagrams. Here you need one more property and quality becomes such a property. So as long as I know V or U or H, it means that I know quality and can find it. Does it make sense? Now, one more important thing to understand. This, and that's why I used to derive formula. This formula is for saturated mixture only, for saturate, or for saturated liquid, saturated vapor. It's not for other phases. Why I say this? I, some people ask me, okay, can we talk about quality for superheated vapor? I told, yes, why not? It depends on definition, but yes, mass fraction of vapor is unity in that case. So X is always one for superheated vapor. Can we talk about quality for compressed liquid? Yes, it will be constant, it will be zero all the time. But this formula, it's only for saturated mixture. Real, please realize this formula works only for fractions. Your quality should be from zero to one. And 
this formula is when V is in between Vf and Vg. Do you understand? When numerator is less than denominator, as well as for U and for R. You may not imagine how many times students do mistake that use this formula arbitrary. And when U is larger than UG, when U is less than UF. Do you understand that if I use this formula for compressed liquid, my X will be negative because numerator will be negative. Do you understand that if I use it for superheated vapor, my, uh, quali my quality will be larger than one? Formally, by if you substitute it here. Do you understand that this mass is nonsense in terms of physics? That mass fraction of vapor cannot be negative. Like pressure cannot be negative. Like volume cannot be negative. And mass fraction of vapor cannot exceed one, right? Fraction cannot be larger, uh, portion cannot be larger than 100%. So at least understand. So again, it's not terrible if you do mathematical error, but imagine that if you at your exam, you write that your quality is negative, you can get, you should get zero for this problem unless on the entire test. The same if quality is larger than one. It means you, it will simply and clarify that you understand nothing in thermodynamics. It's not mathematical error. It's not like you use wrong formula. It means that you have no idea how this formula comes from. So please be careful when you write something like this. You may not imagine how many times in your test we see these items when quality is negative or larger than one. It's fully ridiculous and it really clarifies that you have no idea about this course. Okay? Does it make sense? Does it show you help you to show something? So you identify quality, you identify state. Remember on PT how in P, on PT diagram, if you have PT diagram, for instance, it will be different. Imagine if I plot PT diagram, how it will look like. For PT diagram, it will be like this. So, and if I have PT diagram like this, remember this curve, right? So basically, if I come to one point here, all my substances, all my saturated mixtures uh, will be here. Now they're different. And basically you may realize here that all this, all one point from previous diagram is split. If you consider like P or T or V diagram, it will be here from A to B. So do you understand now that your quality is nothing but ratio of AB interval over AC? Do you understand this? So that is a quality and which is definitely positive. And do you understand that if your point B becomes out of this line, no, this definition will be absolutely ridiculous and wrong. Do you understand? Please ask me something. Do you understand that all points, that point B may be anything from here to here, right? Between A and C. And it just shows that quality goes from zero to one, right? Do you understand that point A, point B, point C, and all other points, uh, let's say B prime, which can be in between, are the same point on PT diagram? Does everyone understand this? And that is why we need one more parameter, which is quality, right? Okay, I hope so. So, just a couple of examples. So please realize how you consider. For instance, there is good example in your textbook. It's example 3.4. If you consider this will be example 3.4. Let me. And it's stated there. Typically, you must identify the state, but it's stated there that, and this is example 3.5. Okay. So basically, if you look at your uh, here, what is stated here that you have uh, water, H2O. And it stated that, it, oh, okay, I'm sorry, something goes wrong here. Yeah, and it's, it happens that you have this water, this water tank has two kilogram of gaseous phase and eight kilogram of liquid phase, okay? What does it mean for us? What, and the question is, what is the temperature here and what is the total volume and so on? How to identify it? Do you have any hint about this? So if I if it's known that I have uh, two kilogram of gas and eight kilogram of liquid, so what is my substance? What is my phase of phases here? What is my state? Do you know? 
Please answer. Saturated. Saturated mixture, exactly. Why? Why excellent? Why saturated? Exactly, it will be saturated. Why? Because your gas and liquid phase coexist, okay? Liquid and gas phase coexist. Yes, because otherwise they wouldn't exist. If it's superheated or, sat or compressed, they may not be together. Do you understand? So yes, so now you know to which table to go and calculate. So if it's saturated mixture, okay, can you find pressure? Yes, because what will be this pressure? This will be given pressure at saturated at given temperature, right? You To which table you go? You go to table A4 and find pressure at this given temperature. And this will be this way. Can you also identify something else? Can you identify, please, uh, what is the quality? What is the total volume? Yes, you will be able. What is your quality? Quality is mass fraction of vapor. What is your mass fraction of vapor here? Right? How many percent will be your quality? Quarter. Not exactly, not quarter, think more. You talk quarter because you take mg or mf. In fact, uh, you should take a fraction of, to the total. You, you take you, you take two kilogram divided by total mass, correct? Oh, a fifth. Right. So basically, yeah. it's, it will be twenty. So that is your quality. And then, if you want to calculate, so you know it. And then you calculate what is volume of the gas phase, what is volume of liquid phase, and so on. For instance, here you mean what we can do together. You can see. I think I open. I have this book open on my screen. It's example which one. It's example, uh, it's example uh, number 3.4, right, in your textbook. So basically here it is that what we have, right? Here is a, this example. I can actually reduce a little bit space to that you see it better, right? So that it is. So what, what do you need to know? You identify, you know that it's saturated mixture. So you know what is your pressure. You, you take your pressure and you see, you see what is your pressure here, right? You see that your pressure will be given pressure at given temperature as we discussed, correct? And then you can find whatever you want. You can find your quality. You can find your total volume. It will be VF plus VG as follows. Or you can find it like this. You can find average specific volume by the formula I gave you and you can find total volume. Does it make sense? Please do it. I hope you can do it yourself and please check. That's uh, that's nice, actually, nice, nice example. Well, there is another example. It's example point uh, three five in your uh, textbook. And basically, yeah, I think I missed something here. It will be uh, also what is stated here that you have 80 liters. Let me inter let me put it down here. Textbook. Okay. I think you have that. It will be volume here is equal to 80 liters. Everybody knows that what is liter? Liter is uh, one uh, cubic decimeter, so it's uh, once over thousand of uh, one over thousand of uh, meter cube, right? So if you have 80 liters, it's what? It will be 0 0.08 meter cube, right? So basically what is stated here, it's also example from your textbook, which I recommend to consider, right? Or oh, right? it should be superscript, not subscript, sorry guys. But anyway, so basically what, so what is stated here? You have, yeah, like this. Okay, so what is stated here? You have three on uh, R134A at given pressure, pressure is 168 kilopascals and given mass, its mass is four kilogram, and you know that it's in, in a tank of volume 80 liters. Again, your task, please identify the state. And there are, like, when I say identify the state, there is like a short question and, and an extended question. Short question, say, what is it? Compressed, saturated, superheat. An extended question is, okay, identify, please, what is the enthalpy, internal energy, volume, temperature, blah, 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 all these items. So how to identify state? What do we have here? I have three on at, at pressure 140 kilopascal. I know pressure. Do I know anything else? Do I know temperature? What I know? Is anything I know here? I need, remember, I need two items 
two intensive properties to identify it. What else I know? Oh yeah, yeah, the good, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that, but yes, it should be definitely like this. Yes, so 80 liters, it's uh, 80, it's 0 0.08 meter cube, exactly, thank you. Now, so what will be second property I know here? What will be? Second property, I is mass intensive property? No. Is volume intensive property? No. So what intensive property I can, can get from here? It's actually density, right? Or specific volume or vice versa, exactly. Well, you say temperature property table. Excellent, but I don't have temperature. I don't have temperature, I don't know. I want to find it. Yes, somebody answered, it's specific volume. I know pressure and how, what is my specific volume? How to get my specific volume? I should take mass and divide by volume. And the answer will be my specific volume. Remember my specific volume will be mass over total volume. It will be total volume over mass. And then what I will do? I will compare my specific volume with what? With Vf and Vg for this given pressure, which I will get from the table. So at this point, I will do like always. I assume this is saturated mixture and check if it's true or not. I will take Vf and Vg for my given pressure, 160 kilopascal. And if it happens that my volume is in between them, then yes, it will be saturated mixture indeed. And I will find temperature from the table. Does it make sense? And if it's true, I can find anything else. I can find my entropy and whatever I need. This is example 3.5 in your textbook. Again, and uh, if I am in the class, I would just draw it on the screen, but here it's easier to show it. So here it is. So what I do, I found my specific volume, like you put here, right? And I, I found that my specific volume is 0.2 meter cube per kilogram, correct? Again, don't confuse liters and meter cube. So calculate properly. And then I find Vf and Vg for my given pressure. It will be this value and this one. So what is my conclusion? Where am I? You see? Where am I here? My conclusion that my, yes, exactly, excellent. My specific volume will be in between, so it's saturated mixture indeed. So my hypothesis was correct, but now we justify it. So if you just answer me, it's saturated mixture, it's, it's, it's not enough answer, maybe you guess. But if you did this analysis as shown here, now you can certify it's really saturated mixture. Why? Because of this, because V is in between two limits. So can I find my temperature now? Yes, you can find because it's, uh, you go to your table and find saturated temperature at given, this given pressure. Now you know temperature, but only now before you did not know. Anything else I can find? Now I can find everything. I know pressure and temperature. Can I find quality? Yes, I find I found, can find my quality as follows by de by definition of quality, and I have that my quality is fifteen percent. By the way, you check that it's not negative and positive, and then not negative and larger than one. If your quality is from zero to one, but number is wrong, I will give you some good points at your exam. If you, I told you what will happen if it's negative or larger than one. Okay, and only when you found quality, only when you found it, you can find everything else. You can find, for instance, you can you can find the enthalpy, right? Here it is how you find it. You can find internal energy. You can find anything you want from this table. Before you could, yes, please. Um, for the quality, the only reason we can use that formula is because it's a saturated mixture, right? Yes, because if it's not saturated mixture, you, you know the quality and it will be one or zero and it does not make sense for you to play around with, right? Okay, thank you. If it was not saturated mixture, pressure and temperature would provide you with everything you need to know. Now pressure and temperature does not describe it. You want to know where you are in this diagram. You may be here, you may be here, you may be here, 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 right? Only quality gives you where you are. And now you can find your enthalpy, Okay, you can find your mass as follows and you can find your volume and whatever you tell you want to find. For instance, you can find that this is a fraction occupied by gas, this is a fraction occupied by liquid. Please realize, if for instance, I, uh, my quality will be not 15% but 60%, my saturated temperature will still be the same. 
okay? And my total volume still will be the same. And my total mass will still be the same. But, my, but the fraction of liquid and vapor will be different. And your total enthalpy, internal energy, and everything else will be different. Do you understand? Please understand. That's a good example to play around. So here it is. For instance, another example. Let's say uh, you have two phase liquid, you have uh, H2O mixture at six degrees, six degrees Celsius and quality of 0.4. So when I see that it's quality, quality is 0.4, what does it mean? What substance I have? It clearly stated that it's saturated mixture, right? Because if it was not saturated mixture, my quality would not be 0.4, it would be zero or one. And it's mixture, even if it was saturated liquid or saturated paper, it would be zero or one. So I'm in between them. So now I don't need to guess something. I know what state I have. So if I, and so how to find my volume, my, my, my average specific volume, you use this formula. What is my average specific volume? It's actually total volume of total mass and you use this formula. So how to calculate? You have value VF. Do you have values for VG and VF? You do have it here, right? For your given temperature. Then, you, you, do you know your quality? You know your quality. So for temp, te, uh, temperature and quality, you're fine. So you fully identify this item, and from here you can, you can calculate. You can calculate what is your total total volume multiplied by mass and anything else you, you have, right? Can you do this? So what will be your pressure? Your pressure will be saturated pressure at this temperature will be here. It will be in this is very bar and it will be what it will be 93 kilopascals, right? So can you find internal energy enthalpy? Exactly the same. Instead of VF and VG, you will have UF, UG, HF, AG, whatever you need. Okay. Why I was a was I able to identify it? Why I was able to do it? Because I have two independent parameters here. What are two independent parameters here? What are they? Right? Temperature and quality. In previous questions that we have here, what are my the two independent parameters here in, in this example? It is pressure and specific volume. In this example, again, temperature and quality. Okay? Do you understand this? That's why we know how to identify the system. I do want you to remember all these diagrams. And I do want you to understand that in TV diagrams, you have these lines and quality, all qualities go from zero to one along your line. All these qualities come to one point and PT diagram. And the worst crime you can commit in this course, if you use wrong table, if you did not identify the state, that you will get zero points because that is a, that is a major point of the course. It's a, I tell you this slide and, Next slide, how we identify state. Remember what we did this. This is the backbone of, of this course. If you don't know this, you fail, you, you have no chance to solve something. Right? I told you, there is one option, only one time when you are legally allowed to confuse states. Remember when? Remember when? Here, right? When you have compressed leak. And last time you can see the example number eight from your textbook. Example number eight from your textbook. So uh, remember, since compressed liquid is almost incompressible because it's already compressed, you, it, it's legal to approximate properties of your compressed liquid by those of saturated liquid at this given temperature. So what I do instead of this point, I approximate it by this point and the line. It's not a big difference. It's only time when you can do it. Why? Because your liquid, uh, compressed liquid tables are limited for water and they're absent for uh, free one at all. That's only time when you can do this. Please, please realize this. Don't do other mistakes. Please don't uh, confuse in other situations because that is really something, something serious. Uh, never approximate your uh, specific, your uh, UVH here by UG, okay? Never approximate superheated vapor like saturated vapor at given temperature. And never approximate your compressed liquid as saturated liquid at the same pressure. It's because here it's difference, it's really different if you go here. 
approximated at given temperature. Okay. Now, and one of the last points that we consider here. Again, another classical mistake. So you are you should be able to identify state, okay? But in this course, very often and most likely all the time, we deal with processes. When you go from one state to another, okay? You may have two state and you may have three state, four state, five state. It can be long process. So if you identif identified state one, you know what is it? Classical mistakes the student do, they extend this knowledge to state two, state three, and so on. It's fully wrong. You should solve the same problem for each state. You, you identify initial state, assume saturated mix, you check and you know it. Okay, great. Now you have some process. Your state two can be different. If state one was saturated mixture, state two can be saturated, but it can be compressed. It can be superheated. You know nothing about state two. Well, you know something from the text. Get your equations from the text, but don't extend your knowledge. You should solve the same problem for each state. You started here and in chapter four, after your exam one, we will continue more on this. So that's the last set what you should do. And here, let's, and in your homework, I gave you some examples of this. So please consider this. For instance, here is example. So you have piston cylinder assembly, which is which contains two kilogram of H2O at 100 degrees Celsius and one bar. So that is your state one. You have 100 degrees Celsius and one bar. Will you be able to identify it? You know pressure and temperature. Will you be able to identify what it is? I believe so. So what you should do here? Assume this is a saturated mixture like usual. So yeah, and, and you will check. So if you have one uh, 100 degrees Celsius, what is your pressure? Your pressure is, uh, you know, this classical boiling point, your pressure will be one atmosphere, which is 101, 322 uh, kilopascals, right? But you have one bar, so what does it mean? It means that, like usually you, you, do, you, you did before, like you usually in this diagram, right? So you take your pressure and go to temp temperature. You will find it, so you will be, where you will be here? You will be here. Your pressure will be a little less than saturated pressure. You will be, right? So you will have superheated vapor here. Okay, so your P1, it's like slightly superheated vapor. What I say here is mathematically, but not physical. What is slightly superheated? It means that your pressure here is still very close to saturated vapor, but it's superheated. It cannot coexist with saturated. And you need to use superheated table to identify. So my state one here is, you see what? My state one is superheated vapor at this given pressure and temperature. Do you understand? Okay, that is my state one. Continue reading the text. The water is compressed to a saturated vapor state where the pressure is 2.5 bar. What does it mean? Now you will have, so water is compressed. So now you will have state two. And your state two will be different from state one. What do you know about state two? State two, it's saturated, but it's stated that state two will be saturated vapor at given pressure, okay? So will you be able to identify the state two? I hope so. Well, you know only only one thing, you know pressure, right? You know nothing else, but you know that it's saturated vapor. So you know what values to use. It, it, you know quality is one. So you know pressure and quality, you know two points. So you know that you, you will take given pressure, go to saturated vapor, uh, vapor uh, saturated uh, table and will take VG, UG, HG because it's saturated vapor. It's not mixture, it's vapor, okay? So will you know state two? Yes, here it is. So you will have another pressure which is higher, which is 2.5 bar and point two, it's here on it. Do you know both states now? Yes. And now it's stated that during this compression, there is heat transfer of energy from water to its surrounding. And it's having a magnitude of two, 250 kilos, right? And now it stated that uh, it please determine work done here. Next point, you will write down first law of thermodynamics that delta U is equal to Q minus W and we'll see what's going on. But key point here, you should know state one and state two. Does it make sense? So we will write first law you don't have this value, so you will have a delta U is Q minus W. Now, what do we know about the system? Do we know your value Q? 
Yes, it stated that, and what, what do you know about state value Q? It stated that you lose 250 kilojoules. Is it positive or negative? Right? It's negative because it goes out from the system, correct? Exactly. Now, do you know state one and state two? Can you write down like this? From here, you will find that your work is delta U minus Q. What is delta U? It will be M U2 minus U1. Mass is the same because it's a closed system. How can you find U1 and U2? You will find it from your table. For state one, you know, for, for one by, for state one, you take saturate uh, superheated table and you file that U1 is this one. For state two, you will have saturated vapor at this given pressure from saturated table, you will find, find U2. Substitute it here and you will find what is work done. It's minus 250 kilojoule minus this value. So what we have here, on the one hand side, you have negative heat transfer, why it's negative? Because it goes out from the system. And second, in fact, your U2 is larger than U1. So your total answer will be minus 311 kilojoule. Is it negative? Yes. Is it, should it be like this? Yes, it should be because, why, why it should be like this? Because you deal with compression, right? It's stated in the text. It's stated in the text that you have compression. You know compression, we discussed. If you do compression, you compress your system. It's passive voice, it's work done on the system. So your work should be negative, as we see here. You, you, we will solve many problems like this later, but what you should realize, please realize that if you know state one, you still know nothing about state two. State two is separate, it's another item that you should uh, be ready to know. You have similar pro some kind of similar problems in your homework, and I ask you to, to clarify, realize. So your problem number six and number seven. What is stated in problem number six? You have piston cylinder system contains liquid water with pressure, and then use constant pressure line, it's heated and so on. So you should be able to identify the state. So you will have state A, state B, and so on. What is key point here? You should be able to identify all the states, but you have constant pressure line. Similar story, problem number seven. It stated you have three piston cylinder system. What does it mean three piston? It means that your piston can move up and down. It means that your pressure is constant and you can fix it. You have a piston cylinder assembly, three piston at constant pressure process. And you stay at the very beginning, you have five kilograms of H2O at given volume, at given pressure. You will find it. And then system preheated to another temperature. You know state one. Do you know state two? Yes, you know state two, because you know temperature and you know that pressure is the same. So you should be able to deal with it. But please realize that you cannot extend knowledge about one state to another. State one and state two may be really different phases. I want to show just a couple of some examples here. It, uh, this example that you see on the screen, I believe, it's very close to what you will have in your homework and please consider it. So take, I believe you see it now, right? So can I increase my, let me, yeah, I will increase a little bit. Yeah, so please read this. You have a closed rigid tank. Yeah, and in the future read text body. If it stated that you have closed rigid tank, it means what? It means mass is constant, volume is constant. And this tank so initially contains 10 kilogram of saturated water vapor at uh, 40 bar. So do we know state one? It's, yes, you know, you know, you know, because what do you know about state one? Do you know pressure? Yes, it's 40 bar. And it's stated it's saturated vapor. So you, it's a quality is equal to one. You know quality and pressure. Your state is fully identified, okay? So, and then the pressure of water drops to another value, to 20, uh, to 20 bar, which will give you state two, because there is heat transfer to the environment and heat transfer will be negative. Your next task will be identify state two. What do you know about state two? Do you know pressure at state two? Yes. Do you know anything else about state two? Looks like not yet, but read the, read the text. You have a rigid tank. So you have, you have the, and what is rigid closed tank? So will your mass change? No, your mass will not change. Will your volume change? No, your volume will not change. So will your specific volume at state one and state two be the same? Yes. Do you know specific volume from state one? Yes. So 
Do you know specific specific volume at state two? Yes, you will. If you know specific volume at state two and pressure at state two, is it enough to identify your state? Yes, that's what you will do. But please realize that state two can be different from state one. So that it is. So what do you know about state one? Go again. So state one, it's 40 bar and saturated water vapor. So what is temperature at state one? It will be saturated temperature at this given pressure, correct? You will get it from correct perspective table. Do you agree? Yes. What is volume at state one? You have total volume, right? What is specific volume at state one? It will be VG, correct? So your state one is completely identified. Do you agree? Now, you go to state two. And what do we know about state two? You know it's state two pressure, correct? Here is your pressure at state two, 20 bar. But also you know that mass and volume don't change. So you will have very good points that allows you to solve the problem. Please realize equations can be very complex or very simple. Equation, word rigid text give you equation. V2 is equal to V1. Word free cylinder piston assembly gives you equation P is constant. P2 is equal to V1. It's not this case, but it also may happen. So you have equations. So now you know V2 at, uh, V2 at state two. So what do we know? In state two, you know two items now. You know that you know your pressure, which is 20 bar, and you know a specific volume, which is this value. Can you identify state two? How you'll do it? Again, don't be lazy from the very beginning. Assume this is saturated mixture and blah, 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 let's continue. You know pressure, you know specific volume. Assume the saturated mixture, what will you do? You will check what are VF and VG for this particular pressure, P2. You will take this one, you will take this one. And then when you compare where you are, and you will see that your new specific volume is in between. So at state two, you will have saturated mixture. You had saturated vapor, now you have saturated mixture and different pressures. And now you should be able to identify whatever you want. You will you should be able to identify quality at state two. Here is it, it will be about 50%. And from this, you will be able to identify uh, whatever you want. You will, should be able to, to identify uh, U2 and so on, so on. Well, potentially what you can do, you may avoid calculating quality, you may just use this proportion as you see on my screen, and you will find U from V itself. So you will know state two, and when you know state two, will you be able to identify U2 at state two? Yes, you should be able to identify it. And that it is. Does it make sense? What is important to remember here, that state two really different from state one. This is what I show here. This is example is really like you from your homework when you have piston cylinder assembly. So I will just give you hints. What is stated here? A piston cylinder system contains five kilogram of water at given pressure and temperature. So you will have to, you have pressure and temperature. You will have to identify state one and you will get that it's saturated. You see it's compressed liquid. But again, don't say just compressed liquid. You should be able to identify it. You should be able to define where is what, for this given pressure and temperature, you should be able to identify it. Assume it's saturated and get the correct answer. And then under constant pressure, it's heated to saturated liquid, then to saturated liquid mixture at given quality and so on. So point B will give you saturated uh, liquid. Point C will be saturated mixture of given quality. Point D will be again saturated mixture at another quality. C corresponds to 20%, D corresponds to 90%. Point E will be saturated vapor, and eventually point F will be superheated vapor. This is how it will look like on TV diagram. This is how it will look like on PV diagram, correct? And your task will be to identify all the parameters in each state. You will spend time on this, but do it. It's important to remember. It's important to clarify. Also, I do it so we can see the main, main major examples here. And I, can, I also recommend you example one, two, and three from your textbook because it really shows something nice, something important. Because in, for instance, in example three uh, from your textbook, you have evaporation from, uh, from example, in example three, you have evaporation from, uh, uh, let me see, if, yeah, exactly. here it is, from, from saturated liquid to saturated vapor. So your state one will be, you will have here given mass, a saturated liquid and then it completely ev ev evaporates 
which means that it becomes saturated vapor and given pressure. So you identify state one, which will be VF, UF, and GF at this given pressure, and so calculate VG, UG, and uh, uh, the same for saturated vapor. And from here, you will be able to go from state one to state two. You will see how your volume change and how your heat transfer change and so on, so on, so on. Okay, at this point, we completed chapter, not chapter, we completed second part of chapter three, but don't be too encouraging because there is one more big topic that we will start next week. And this is ideal gas. And what I will tell you in advance that do, very often we can see the ideal gas on the end of the section, so at the end of the topic. So in your exam, you will use ideal gas. So please, I tell you in advance, don't use ideal gas unless this is justified. You should use tables. Ideal gas happens very seldom in practice. It's our real, real simplification. But we will work on it and we'll see what to do. This will be on Monday and Wednesday. I tell you, if I have time, I will give you some quiz on Wednesday, but we should have time for this because otherwise I want really to complete everything because your homework is due Friday. So now you should be ready to do your entire homework except for problem number five, which is about ideal gas and except for some uh, questions in problem number two. In problem number two, you have to B, uh, to C, uh, and to D. So except for two and five, you should be able to do everything. And I do recommend that you do it this weekend and ask questions on Monday. Okay, let me stop at this point. I be, we are in good shape, but please, please take it seriously. Those who did not attend my lecture and occasionally listen to me in record, start attending. It's time to focus on it. Those who don't do homework, start doing, please. Okay. I will stop at this point. Any question, please? I maybe I'll, uh, there are questions I will try to answer. Yeah, please. How much of exam will be on chapter three? Most well, it's hard to say, but uh, let me say like this. No, not the entire exams one will be on chapter three, but a big portion of it. And what is most important, chapter three is backbone for the rest of the course. So uh, you should know chapter one and two for exam one, yes. But if you don't know chapter three, you will fail at exam two and three for sure. So don't like under amplify exam uh, chapter three. You should know chapter three, it's key point. You should know it. You should know it. But still other things will be at exam. The, what is the best way to prepare to exam? Do, uh, do your homeworks. Uh, uh, yeah, people uh, and do it yourself, all the homeworks. It's good if you know, you know that you don't understand something, uh, redo this task. You have all solution posted. Please make sure you understand your solution. Next, please make sure you can solve it yourself. If you look at the solution and you don't understand something, solve it again yourself until you understand it. Where are examples in the textbooks? Okay, well, I do recommend you that you read your textbook and then you will see this example. You, it, it's a must. You should, I, you know, once upon a time, once you uh, remember when I got ACI evaluation, some student wrote it. Well, lectures were good, but uh, I had to read my textbook anyway. So I don't replace your textbook. I don't have enough time to read the invoice, the, your textbook here in the lectures. Read your textbooks. You will see all the examples there. I can answer various particular examples, but I do recommend that you go through all these examples. It's really important. Okay, more questions, please. Yes, homework help session next week, like usually Wednesday and Thursday, help session for homework number three. Moreover, on Friday, I will give you another help session, my help session at five o'clock. You are welcome to come. And also I will give you some overview at our lecture on Friday. You will see how time, time goes. Okay, people ask more exam examples. We try it, and believe me, when we start chapter five and chapter six, it will be more applied features and more examples. But realize I have 50 minutes, three weeks, three days a week. I cannot solve too many things in the class. I simply cannot. Also, I should give you theory. I should give you basic understanding. So you should do a lot of examples yourself. Uh, it's not enough just to attend my lectures and do nothing else. Uh, we will try to solve as many examples as we can, but you see it's very intensive class and we, we are always in a hurry and we don't have much time. 
Your exam is in a week and we still should finish uh, ideal guest studies. And I still uh, find time to give you quizzes and so on. More questions, please? Exam is not 15th, exam is on 5th, I told you. Example of this in the book. Well, okay, in the book, I can, we can see that examples uh, one, two, th three, four, five, one, three, four, five, seven, eight. Please do it as well. We will consider other examples as well. Some, okay, yes, yeah, some of you found my mistake. Please uh, write your name so I can record it uh, for bonus tickets. Any more questions, please? Okay, let me then stop sharing it. Anyway, I will have office hours now so you can switch to office hours. How much of exam will be, uh, will be chapter three? About half of it, but again, chapter three is key point of everything. Okay. 